Hello there, my name is Reki. Welcome back to another Fat Electrician Reaction. And in the spirit of the holidays, uh, we're going to watch a military Christmas story brought to you by the Fat Electrician. If you haven't checked out the Fat Electrician yet, please do. And you find the link for the channel and for this video we're going to watch located in my description. Go there and give them the support that they so much deserve. Eggnog Riot at West Point. I think I will say that eggnog is probably not my favorite, but I will down it if there's nothing else to eat, drink. You know what I mean. You know what I mean. Um, the video is probably about some kind of eggnog riot at West Point, and I don't, I'm not trying to understand. It, did it run out, or did someone do something stupid? I guess we're going to find out, right? If you do enjoy the content you're currently watching, don't forget to smack the like and, of course, hit that subscribe. I would greatly appreciate that. Thank you so much. A big thank you to my channel members and my patrons. Thank you so much. A shout out to the Supreme Tier donators. Thank you. Personal shout outs to the Ultimate Supporters Deja, Walt, Dwayne, Dana, Troy, Sarah, Robert, Matt, Lon, Barbara, and Kevin. Now, let's do this. I'm very eager for this one. What can go wrong? What happened? What happened? It was the night before Christmas and all the cadets at West Point got hammered, destroyed their barracks, and tried to kill several of their instructors. <laughs> Today we're talking about one of the greatest military Christmas stories of all time, Mutiny. the West Point Eggnog Riot of 1826. But first a word from our sponsor, this video is brought to you by the greatest sporting goods store retail location on the planet, Shields. And if you don't live near one, they have an even better online store that's got satisfaction guaranteed and price matching, so make sure to go check them out. And then of course we have one of our newer sponsors, Permasafe. They are industrial strength disposable gloves, you can put like a gallon of water inside these things, they still won't break. That's quality <laughs> jiggling right there. If you actually work with your hands, you need some perma-safe rubber gloves, okay? You're just trying to get 40 hours on your paycheck. You're not trying to go home and give your wife a UTI. Keep your hands clean with perma-safe disposable gloves. Now, you're going to feel some pressure. I mean, back to the video. All right, important background info. West Point, the prestigious military academy, was created in 1802, and from 1802 to 1817, it was a complete shit show. It had a terrible reputation for being complete and utter chaos pretty much all of the time. Cadets were allowed to come and go as they pleased, and then when they did show up, they were too preoccupied drinking or dueling one another to actually learn how to become effective military officers. Cue this man, Colonel Slyvanus Thayer. He's going to be hired as superintendent in 1817, and he's going to turn this ship around. He's going to come up with all kinds of radical rules and because of this he is regarded as the father of West Point and when oh. I say radical rules it was basically just him pointing out obvious shit <clears throat> I think when I when I think about West Point is okay <clears throat> okay so I need to dig I need to dig something I need to dig in my brain here uh West Point uh he said officers and of course I know that West Point is uh a school that educates and trains officers are they is that the only thing that they do at west point shit that we shouldn't be allowed to do anymore like get drunk all day kill each other in duels and you actually have to show up to class the hardest of these rules to enforce was the no drinking because there was three places to buy alcohol in very close proximity to West Point. They had North Tavern, which was pretty much on West Point. Then you had this little general store type deal ran by a guy by the name of Benny Haven and his wife Lolita. And then right across the Hudson, you had Martin's Tavern. So Thayer and his war on alcohol buys the building that North Tavern is in, kicks them out and turns it into a hospital. Then he instructs Benny Haven and his wife to no longer sell alcohol to any of the cadets. The only tavern left after that is Martin's Tavern, but that's across the Hudson River, so he just leaves a guard on sentry duty at the dock where the boats are 24-7 to keep any cadets from going over to that tavern. Wow, so it wasn't actually that type of problem. They actually killed each other when they were training duel duels. Uh, so they actually had to do this. They had to. It's like the prohibition. 
That's it. The alcohol problem is solved. Or so they thought, you see, because Benny Haven over here is one of the boys. He was a veteran of the War of 1812, so he keeps selling alcohol under the table, hush hush, to all the cadets. This goes on for a couple years, and then Thayer finally catches Benny and his wife selling alcohol, kicks them off the West Point campus, and the rumor is they are the only two people to ever receive a lifetime ban from the military academy. Now at this point, Benny and his wife have essentially lost their job and their home. Pretty much anybody would be begging for forgiveness and promise not to do it again, but Benny and his wife Laleda are the number one supporting characters in this story because they decide that they're going to buy a fishing shack right on the Hudson River, right outside of West Point, where all the cadets could get to them. Benny's new tavern, though, is only accessible from two different routes. You have to either get there by a boat on the Hudson River, or you have to crawl down a 60-foot steep cliffside that has stone stairs carved into it, meaning that it is treacherous for pretty much anybody, especially if you're drunk. And whether Benny intended it to be this way or not, this actually actually discourages pretty much anybody except for a bunch of cadets that are trying to avoid from being caught from drinking at his tavern. So his tavern is essentially just West Point cadets all the time. The only problem with that is that the West Point cadets don't actually make any money, so Benny decides he's going to give everybody a year-long tab, and he's willing to let them pay off their tab in barter, and the only thing he's not willing to accept is West Point military uniforms. He accepts everything else, including their shoes. Okay, if you're not picking up what I'm putting down, I'm trying to tell you that a grizzled veteran from the War of 1812 has opened up a bar right outside of West Point and all the cadets can go there. I mean, that's that's how a business went. A businessman will actually survive getting punched in the face with more or less prohibition for the West Pointers. This dude just buys a shack in a highly unaccessible spot. <laughs> Try to open up some kind of a bar for the, for the cadets and it doesn't charge them year-long tab i mean that would be for me that would be the longest tab. i will go him all right i'm here well a recce there's about a million dollars in debt get drunk and pay for it with shit that they've stolen i mean strategically transferred to his location so obviously all the cadets love this guy he's probably the most influential bartender in american history any big military name from that era that went through west point was friends with benny haven ulysses s grant homeboys. Even Edgar Allan Poe is quoted as saying that Benny was the only congenial soul in that godforsaken place. So that's the deal. That's where everybody goes to drink and get their alcohol. It's from Benny Haven's Tavern, except for the two times a year where the cadets are actually allowed to drink on campus, and that is 4th of July and Christmas. Fast forward, 4th of July, 1826, all the cadets are drinking on campus openly because they're allowed to because it's 4th of July, and they get absolutely hammered at which point they decided that they were going to perform a uh, snake no. dance i have no idea what that is but apparently at the end of it they ran over picked up the commodore of west point major william worth carried him off to the barracks because they liked the guy so much they wanted to kidnap him so they could go drink with him because of this superintendent thayer decides that they went too far and that there's just going to be no more drinking ever again at west point fast forward later that year december 22nd 1826 it's almost christmas and for the first time since west point's inception the cadets are not going to be allowed to throw a Christmas party on Christmas Eve and have everybody get hammered on eggnog. So obviously they're going to do it anyways and just try not to get caught, but I mean, worst case scenario, they do get caught. What's really going to happen? You'll be shot for this? No, I don't think so. More like chewed out. I've been chewed out before. <laughs> Some of the cadets sneak off and they go across the Hudson River to Martin's Tavern where they can get a better deal on buying a bunch of yeah, the German. Oh, you're going to get shot. Nah, no, no. Nah. They're going to yell at me and, 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 and curse a lot and it's going to be a lot of profanity, but that, I'm used to that of alcohol and their goal is to get at least half a gallon of whiskey for the eggnog that being said anything worth doing is worth overdoing so naturally they end up with two gallons of whiskey and they get caught by the guard on the way back a private by the name of james dugan and they end up bribing him with 35 cents to look the other way next day december 23rd all the cadets are still stealing <laughs> food and anything else they could want for this party while that's going on the staff have their christmas party at thayer's house it's at this christmas party that thayer decides that he's going to be a pretty cool guy he knows that the cadets are going to drink tomorrow but he's just going to turn a blind eye. He's not going to increase the amount of guards or the amount of staff on duty. He's just going to look the other way. He's going to have the same old two officers on staff making sure everything's okay. He knows they're going to drink. They can drink. Let them think they got away with it. 
it'll be fine. So that gets decided and the next order of business is to figure out what they're going to do with the class fuck up Jefferson Davis. Yeah, like as in the president of the Confederacy in the future at this point. Apparently he has quite the drinking problem and he's not very slick about it because he has the distinct honor of being the first student to ever be arrested for going to Benny's Tavern and he just got back from being hospitalized for four months because the second time he got caught at Benny's Tavern he tried to make a getaway and ended up falling down the 60 foot cliff on the stone stairs to get there and he's been hospitalized ever since and he just got back to class fast forward again december 24th uh not all heroes wear a cape christmas eve day of the party during the day all the cadets are going out they're buying all the fresh eggs all the fresh milk from the local farmers some of them go over to benny's tavern they end up buying an extra gallon of moonshine in case the two gallons of whiskey aren't enough and <clears throat> one thing uh eggnog is that whis you can you use whiskey for that i didn't know that you cannot use whiskey for that. How the heck do you make an eggnog? I, th I thought it was like vodka and, and milk. Oh, my days. I have no clue. All right. Throw me your best eggnog recipe. Maybe I can do that once. Right. I can do eggnogs. There's not going to be a riot about it. The reason why I like these kind of stories is because they're so genuine. We're talking about people, human beings trying to be at West Point, be all they can be. However, still have some amazing time while they're there. I remember that when I did my service. I, I hated most of it uh, because people telling me what to do all the time. I didn't like that, but I remember the fun parts. It's about, I love the fun parts. I can sit here in my couch just reminiscing and just walk down memory lane uh, and just laugh, just laugh out loud because we had an amazing time. Uh, and I guess people at West Point were probably one of the best cadets, but they were young, and they wanted a party, and they were stopped. They found a new way. Yeah. And Benny's wife, Lolita, also makes him a bunch of mutton, which they're going to take back to the barracks and heat in the middle of the night as a drinking snack while they're getting drunk on eggnog. Eggnog and mutton, which is disgusting to think about. All right, fast forward a couple <laughs> hours. Everybody's been released for the day. I love They're it, all though. hanging out at the barracks. It's nighttime. It's time to get this party started. They break out the wooden buckets. They start mixing the eggs and the milk and the booze to make their eggnog. The two officers that are in charge of everybody, Captain Ethan Hitchcock and Lieutenant William Thornton, are going to bed at like 11 midnight. That's when the party's really going to start. And that's pretty much exactly what happens. Hitchcock and Thornton go to bed, and then everybody else just kind of starts drinking quietly yep. in their barracks rooms, amongst themselves, hanging out in the hall, having a good time. And naturally, as the night goes on, things get a little bit louder and a little bit louder as everybody gets drunker and drunker. And finally, at 4 a.m., Captain Hitchcock is awoken by a bunch of noise. So Captain Hitchcock gets up out of bed. He's going to go investigate but he knows exactly what he's going to find. This dude's been in the army his whole life. He knows it's just a bunch of cadets drinking on Christmas Eve. It's not really that big of a deal. All he's going to do is he's going to go find the first group oh, he can, no. tell them to be quiet. They're going to tell everybody else. This is the part when everything goes south, right? Else, And everything's going to be completely fine. So that's exactly what he does. He goes upstairs to the first of many barracks rooms. It has a bunch of cadets drinking inside of it, pokes his head in the door and is like, hey, shut the fuck up and go to bed. And they're like, Cool, our bad. And he leaves. He goes back to his room. And that should have been the end of the entire thing. So yep. Captain Hitchcock is laying in bed. Sure enough, somebody starts banging on his door. So he pops up, goes to check the door. There's nobody there. Looks down the hallway. Nobody there. That was weird. Whatever. I'm going to go back to bed. Lays back down. Five minutes later, somebody bangs on his door again. Goes over, checks the door. Nobody's there. Looks down the hallway. Nobody's there again. Shuts the door, stomps on the ground like he's going to lay back down in bed and waits there for like 30 seconds. Somebody bangs on the door again. He opens the door and all he catches is the ass end of a bunch of cadets yelling tally ho hitch. Okay, now it's on. He was trying to be cool. You guys are being drunk assholes. Now there's going to be consequences. Oh my so he God. goes upstairs. He starts uh. kicking in doors, chewing people out, writing down people's names. He gets to one room. Two of the cadets try to hide underneath a blanket and another guy tries to take his hat and cover up his face so he can't write his name down. The dude's under the blanket. He's He's like, take the blanket off. Quit fucking around. Whatever. They take the blanket off. He sees who they are. Okay, cool. Dude with the hat won't take the hat off of his face. He tries to walk past him. He ends up pushing him back into the room. And he's like, no, take the hat off your face so I can see who you are. And the dude doesn't do it. So he's like, take the hat off or I'm going to take the hat off for you. And then he rips the hat out of the dude's hands, 
sees who it is, writes down his name, no big deal, goes over to the next room. Now, the logical thing to do here would be to go to bed and deal with your punishment in the morning. However, since they're drunk assholes at this point in time, <laughs> they decide that since Hitchcock actually touched one of them, that it was an attack on their honor and they needed to retaliate. So they went and got bayonets and knives and pistols and they were going to hunt Hitchcock down and kill him. Cut back to Hitchcock, he's making his way through the barracks, there's drunk cadets laying down in the hallway, it's a complete shit show. He makes his way into one of the bigger rooms, it has like 20 cadets inside of it, at which point he explains to them that because there's more than 12 of them, this technically constitutes as a riot, and starts reading them the riot act before informing them that they're all under arrest. Then, after placing all of them under arrest, he tells the cadet in charge of this like area or this room that he needs to open up all the foot lockers so he can find all the booze and get rid of it. And that cadet is like... No thanks, and he goes and lays down on the floor and falls asleep. At this point, fucking Jefferson Davis, the future president of the Confederacy, runs in, slams the door behind him, holding the door while looking at it, and is like, guys, hide the grog, Hitchcock's coming. And then he turns around and Hitchcock's right there, and he's like, oh. <laughs> Damn. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I want to hear that again because that was the, uh, oh, that was funny. Oh, shit. Yeah. There's more than 12 of them. This technically constitutes as a inside of it at which point them under arrest he tells the cadet in charge of this like area or this room that he needs to open up all the foot lockers so he can find all the booze and get rid of it and that cadet is like no thanks and he goes and lays down on the floor and falls asleep at this point fucking jefferson davis the future president of the confederacy runs in slams the door behind him holding the door while looking at it and is like guys hide the grog hitchcock's coming and then he turns around and hitchcock's right there and he's like oh Damn. At this point, Captain Hitchcock looks at Jefferson Davis and is like, take your dumb ass to bed. And he's like, okay. And then he goes to bed, falls asleep. That's the rest of the story for him. Yeah. Captain Hitchcock literally just told the future president of the Confederacy that it's past his bedtime and he listened. <laughs> this man is the biggest gangster in the entire story. Captain Hitchcock then turns around to the 20 cadets that he was oh, just wow. chewing out, looks at them. They look at him. He looks at them. He looks at the guy that fell asleep on the floor, not respecting his authority. I'm gonna tell you, these guys are having some serious fun. I am very jealous. Of course, uh, when I did my service, uh, you were not allowed to take in any, any alcohol whatsoever on base. That was like criminal to do. So that never actually happened. I never saw anyone with, uh, with booze or something uh, on the, you know, on the, in the barracks or even on the base. It was completely completely banned of course there's guns drunk people do stupid shit and he's like i have no idea what to fucking do right now so he just turns around and he leaves he walks away and while all this is going on outside the barracks there's an active duty private that's on century duty over the night and he's got a drum with him to alert everybody in case like there's a fire or somebody attacks or he just needs everybody to wake up he has this emergency drum and a bunch of drunk cadets come up to this poor private and are like hey give me your fucking drum set so they steal this private's drum set and just start playing it. This ends up waking up the other officer, Lieutenant Thornton, who goes to investigate what's going on. Apparently at this point, the eggnog riot, mutiny, rebellion, whatever you wanna call it, it's really kicked off and the idea is spread that we're gonna kill some of the West Point staff because Thornton is immediately stopped by a student that has a fucking sword. To which Lieutenant Thornton is like, what the fuck are you doing? Put the goddamn sword down. And the drunk cadet like grumbles something, throws the sword on the ground and then falls asleep on the floor. Cut back to Captain Hitchcock, no. who has an angry mob of students hunting him and he has no idea. He's come up on another room of cadets that have barricaded themselves into their room and he's trying to kick the door down. And he finally kicks the door in and one of the cadets pulls a pistol and fires. And at the last second, one of the other cadets hits the pistol up and the bullet hits the door frame right next to Hitchcock. And Hitchcock is like, holy shit. Okay, things are getting out of hand. It's time to go get help. <laughs> Cut back to Lieutenant Thornton, who just got done dealing with the cadet with the sword. And then he hears a- uh, I do believe that this is probably just the beginning of how things can go south pretty fast. You know, when the shit hits the fan. Again, I am jealous of the amazing fun that they probably had, uh, especially the cadets. Um, remember, uh, something you can remember the entire life, you, you know, after that part. Uh, I'm really hoping that no one actually got hurt. And I mean hurt. They definitely got hurt. I'm just talking about, let's hope that no one gets killed in this situation. Because guns... Drunk people, very bad combination. No matter how drunk you are, 
how fun you're having, guns is not a good thing. It's a gun shot. He's like, what the fuck is happening right now? So he goes to investigate that. And on his way there, one of the cadets hits him in the head with a piece of firewood and knocks him unconscious. So Hitchcock makes his way out of the barracks. He's going to find help. He runs into private James Overton because he was looking for him. And James Overton is like, hey, your cadets stole my drum set. What the fuck? To which Hitchcock is like, yeah, well, they just tried to kill me. So obviously things are out of control. Why don't you go get the comm? Now, when he said go get the comm, he meant Commodore William Worth. However, the cadets that were off to the side overheard him and they thought he said the bomb. And they took that as he was referring to the bombardiers, which if you don't know, West Point wasn't just a college at this point. It was also an active military base. And on that base oh, was a bunch okay. of bombardiers or artillery men. And the cadets and the artillery men absolutely fucking hated each other and had this huge rivalry and in the cadets drunken stupor they took that to mean that the artillery men were going to show up and start like shelling the barracks or at least like try to attack them somehow so they spread the word and all the drunk cadets start fortifying their barracks for an attack they're putting all the furniture in front of doors they're breaking out all the windows they're loading whatever guns they have they're getting ready for an actual fight it is at this point that captain hitchcock hears the bugle playing meaning that it's time for everybody to wake up or so he thought because he turns around and realizes that a bunch of drunk cadets had stolen the bugle and we're playing it too. He then just kind of stands there for the next couple hours watching all the cadets fortify the building for an attack that's never coming as they break out windows, ruin a bunch of furniture, and then eventually they all get quiet and pass out drunk waiting for this attack to come that never actually comes. So then the real bugle does actually kick off and all the other people start showing up. There's a couple of barracks that weren't actually involved. All those cadets start showing up. The rest of the staff, Superintendent Thayer, and everybody is like, what? the fuck happened there's broken <laughs> glass everywhere there's mutton vomit all over the place there's drunk privates out in the field with a drum set like what is happening so then captain hitchcock goes over talks to thayer explains everything that happened and he's like what do you want me to do and thayer the dude that knows everything like total hard ass he's like totally in charge even he's like I have no idea. So they just kind of go about their day like nothing happened. And then slowly no. over time, they kind of figure out, okay, well, we have to do something. So they launch a little internal investigation. They figure out that there's like 90 cadets involved in this riot. And 90 is like roughly a third of all of West Point. So obviously they're not going to be able to kick out everybody. So they decide they're just going to take like the top 20 worst offenders and they're going to expel them. And like all but two of them were invited back the next year. So basically it was just a for show punishment. Some of the more notable names of people that were expelled include Hugh Mercer, who ended up being a general for the Confederacy in the Civil War. Then you had Samuel Roberts, who ended up being the Secretary of State for the Republic of Texas. You've got Benjamin Humphreys, who was expelled, who ended up being also a Confederate general and the governor of Mississippi. Uh, Jefferson Davis famously didn't get a punishment at all. And then you had uh, John Campbell, who they tried to expel, but he argued his way out of it, and he went on to sit as a Supreme Court justice later in life. Which, I mean, you have to admit, between a bunch of... <laughs> oh. Oh, wow. leaders getting in trouble for a grog mutiny Ugh. and a future Supreme Court justice arguing his way out of his punishment. It's some of the best examples of foreshadowing I've ever seen in my entire life. In conclusion, the moral of the story is that if you're going to do the wrong thing, do it with a lot of your buddies because oh, they can't wow. get all of you in trouble at the same time. Because teamwork makes the dream work, even if the dream is to be an asshole on Christmas Eve. Thank you for watching. Best way to support the channel is go buy some merch over at thefatelectrician.com. Oh. Happy... Christmas, Merry, whatever the fuck you celebrate, quack bang, out. I'm gonna go drink some eggnog. Oh my god. This was such a treat. Such a treat from the start. And he is so good at actually telling it. Even though this was probably one of the worst things that happened on West Point, they had fun. And I'm jealous. I am so jealous. I wish I was there. Just except the guy with the gun of course what we have learned today people is that <clears throat> don't have alcohol when you got a sword next to you because that sword looks like a fun thing to use when you're shit-faced and that's not a really good thing to do i'm telling you uh <clears throat> to round this up amazing story loved every second of it loved it loved it loved it and I am addicted to this channel. A lot of you guys give me constant suggestions <clears throat> to the fat electrician, and I'm going through them as much and as fast as I possibly can.
If you did enjoy this, do not forget to smack the like and, of course, hit that subscribe. I would greatly appreciate that. And again, <clears throat> no drugs with guns or weapons. So much for watching. I'm Ricky. You stay safe.